Hello everyone. For 30 years, Texas Instruments has had a firm grasp on the U.S. education system. 1990, 1999, 2004, 2015, even the newest 2023 models remain virtually unchanged. What could possibly put an end to Texas Instruments' reign? Zero. This is actually Zero's third prototype I've been beta testing. Their first two models looked so similar to Texas Instruments calculators that they were threatened with legal action. So this new calculator, third prototype, is a new design. Let's see what it's all about. And here it is. Before I get into it, what is Zero? Zero is a small US-based company founded by Jesse McLaughlin a couple of years ago, who seems to have thought, if textured instruments design is so ingrained in the US education system, why fight it? Why not lean into the design and just make something that's better in software? Now is this prototype better? <laughs> no, not yet, not yet. However, it does have some really good designs. I'm excited to see when it's finally released. A few of the upgrades just make sense, like use USB-C to charge the calculator, which is something not even Apple could do in a reasonable time frame. It also has a charging LED, which is something Texas Instrument has been removing on their latest T84 Plus CEs. This also doubles as a testing LED. It also has a rubber bumper, which will help when there's hard falls on a hard floor, as well as a slide case that can be put on either direction, either from the bottom or from the top. The T84 Plus E can only go on to one direction. Now you've probably already noticed, while both are glossy, the Zero is shiny, like way too shiny. It can be even difficult to read the text under light. Now Zero is already open to changing this design and I expect it will be fixed by the full release. Now another thing you'll notice is the design is a little bit different. However, from this point down, all of the buttons between these two calculators are exactly the same. On this row, the only thing that's different is the clear button is moved up, and the stat button is moved where clear used to be. Other than that, this entire row is the same. Also, the top five buttons are in, are in the exact same place. The only real thing that's moved are the arrow keys to the center, and mode and XT theta in are moved to either side of the arrow keys. Delete and clear have been stacked on top of each other. That means all of the same buttons are here, they're just in a different location. Well, let's finally turn this thing on. The first thing you'll notice is that there is a dark mode, which is something the T84 Plus E still does not come with unless you jailbreak and install your own version. Now, just for this video, I'm going to turn dark mode off just because it shows better up on camera. Turn that off, and we are left with this mediocre screen. It doesn't get as bright as a T84 Plus CE, however it's plenty bright for use in a brightly lit room, and it goes down extremely dark to the point where you can turn the backlight completely off to save power. Just remember to press second and up to turn the brightness back on. I haven't had it long enough to do a proper battery test, however the Zero does so show you a snapshot of its current power draw. You press second, mem, and press about, and right here it shows you the current draw. Now this is a 2200 milliamp hour battery, which is almost twice as large as the 1200 milliamp battery in the TI4 Plus CE. Now extrapolating from this data, assuming it's correct, you should expect anywhere between 31 and 60 hours of battery life on this thing. However, real-world use may affect that significantly. For reference, a T4 Plus CE on maximum brightness running a program on heavy load will last about 26 hours before dying. So with that sort of battery life, what sort of performance can you expect? Are they going to be roughly equivalent? No, not even close. The T4 Plus CE is running on a 8-bit Easy80 processor, which is 30 years old, and has, and has significantly less RAM and ROM available. The 
processor on the Zero is also significantly newer. It's an ARM processor clocked at 200 megahertz, while this is clocked at 48. This means that when we graph the exact same equations, scroll over so you can see that, press graph, the Zero is nearly instant with basic graphs, while the TA4 plus CE is going to struggle bus along for qu quite a while. It's trying. It's doing its best. Hey, there we go. This is not only apparent on the graph screen, but also... Ah, one current bug is you can't press clear to quit the graph screen right now. You have to do second quit. I expect this will be fixed on the final release. Go into the calculation history. We will select the summation and run it at the exact same time. The zero did it instantly, while the TF4 plus C is going to take several seconds to calculate it. Now, something you'll also know is this is just a jumble of numbers. You can barely make out what kind of digit grouping that is. Well, the zero actually has digit grouping and shows it in the form of tick marks. So I can easily see that's nine billion. Well, this is, those are numbers. There's also other obvious upgrades over the TA4 Plus E. For example, it has the exact same screen resolution of 320 by 240. However, it uses a slightly smaller font, so it both looks better and can fit more on the screen. You can see the multiplication symbols there while the multiplication ends there. And if it does go off the screen anyways, and you press enter, you can see they got the same results, so they're the same numbers. On the TA4 Plus E, you can only now scroll Oh wait, no, you can't even do that. You can't scroll to see what your previous equation was unless you press second, enter for entry to bring it to your line. Well, with the zero, when you scroll up into your calculation history, you can just scroll and see what your last history was, even if it fits far up in your history. So with the major processor upgrade and memory upgrades, what sort of programming can you expect from this? I'll start with the best part, the Python implementation. It is so much better than TI's implementation, like miles better, not even close. Texas Instruments uses TI Python, which is a proprietary implementation of CircuitPython, which is a cut-down version of MicroPython, which is already a cut-down version of full Python 3. However, the Zero has full MicroPython, version 1.20.0. It's currently just a shell, so you can't really do anything fancy with it. So I'll just do a basic program for you real quick. And there we go. A Python program running successfully. Another thing I can mention this is here also supports lowercase letters right out of the box. We can do capital A, we can do lowercase a. It doesn't matter. TF4 plus E can only do capital letters. Now, how about the other programming option, TI Basic? Now, this isn't quite as fleshed out, so I can't really show you a great implementation just yet. It is not very fast. However, TI Basic is also not very fast. However, TI Basic has been around for well, decades, so there are dozens of thousands of programs written for this thing, and most of them are compatible across calculators. Zero has none of that community just yet, so while the programming language is similar to the TI Basic language, it is not cross-compatible and won't be able to run the same programs. Now, I'm not going to hit on prototype clearly unfinished software too much. However, there are some fundamental flaws with the calculator currently. For example, if I check if 0.1 plus 0.2 equals 0.3, calculator says no, it does not, which is clearly incorrect. And the TA4 plus CE does show the correct answer. Now, this is a software bug, and it can be fixed. However, it is concerning the CNA calculator. Now, there's not just software problems there's some hardware concerns as well, mostly pertaining to the buttons for me. The current dome and tall buttons make it easy to press at an angle, which can cause 
buttons not to be registered. It's also just not quite as pleasant as some of the other buttons I felt. I'm not the only one who's thought this. I've showed this to about a dozen coworkers and friends, and about 60% of them agree that the buttons still need a bit of work. However, 40% of them thought it was actually really good and they actually liked the buttons quite a bit. Generally, people's main concern was that the buttons were very firm or that they are poorly stabilized and don't always get pressed. There's also a flaw where if you type really quickly, it doesn't catch all of your numbers. This is because there's no key buffer. Well, if I do the same button test on the TA4 plus CE, it caught all of the numbers without any problem. Now, the zero graphing calculator to the previous prototype, which I have over here, does have that keypad buffer and caught all of the numbers even if I kind of mistype them. Now, I really hope this is addressed in the final release, and if it's a software bug, I expect it will be fixed by then. Now, regarding using the software itself, the vast majority of people just thought, yeah, it's a D84, it acts and just works like one. And they were totally fine with it, had no issues getting accustomed to the somewhat different keypad layout. About 20% of people actually started digging a bit deeper and found some bugs that I did report to zero. The last couple of hardware concerns are that the back, there are hex screws now holding the calculator together. Previously on other zero prototypes, these were Phillips head screws. Now this just makes battery replacement more difficult when the time comes and the battery has to be replaced. It is rechargeable through that USB-C port, however, all batteries eventually come to an end. On the T84 plus CE, there is Torx screws holding the calculator together. However, there are Phillips screws holding the battery door, which is a very common bit and easy to obtain and swap out the battery. I hope to see that addressed on the next calculator revision for zero. Lastly, with the hardware, well, the calculator does come with a USB A to C cable in the box it does not come with a charging brick. And Texas Instruments does include chargers with their calculators. A couple last things, while well, this does have a numerical solver just like the TA4 plus CE, so it can solve for X, for example I'll just change this to 5 as my guess, click solve, it figures out that 0 equals 5X plus 1, it figured out X equals negative 0.2. However, it does not have CAS, so it can't handle equations symbolically, and it doesn't have an exact math engine, so it can't display answers in the form of radicals or in terms of pi. The TA4 plus CE also cannot do that. It also does not come with reverse Polish notation, which if you've never heard of before, you probably won't ever care. But for those who do care about RPN, this is not the calculator for you. Now lastly, I'm sure you're wondering what the price is going to be. Fortunately, I don't have an answer for you yet. However, I understand the goal is to be less expensive than a T84 plus CE. However, I can assure you this will not be a cheap calculator. So could I recommend this calculator? Well, it's a prototype, so I can't really give you an answer for that. However, I can't say any competition in the calculator space to tackle TI's dominance is a good thing. If Zero becomes popular and TI notices them, they might have an incentive to improve their calculators. And that's all. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Have a good day. Also, it's 11.22 p.m. This video is supposed to come out tomorrow morning. So, uh, thank you for sticking with Tired TLM. Zero is a small U.S.-based company founded by Jeff Yeep of Jeff Yeep. <laughs>